Greetings, travelers. From beyond the fog, I just wanted to let everyone know that my generic opening message was ripped off by Elden Ring, and since they're more popular than anything else in the world, my opening is now retroactively an Elden Ring reference. On today's adventure into the human condition, we'll be observing the ancient art of housing in Final Fantasy XIV. If you're one of those young people in the world today, you've probably seen all the housing prices skyrocketing thanks to massive investment firms buying up every single asset they can get their grubby hands on. Neat citation. And you wonder how things got to this point. Then you decided to log on to Final Fantasy XIV to immerse yourself in some version of ERP, only to remember that the Final Fantasy XIV housing is just as shitty. Never in my life have I seen a company dedicate themselves to reminding me about the problems of reality. But I've been proven wrong yet again. So I'm going to give you an overview of why housing sucks. Getting a house is already fucking awful. Let's go over some basic mechanics. There are houses. Houses exist in a subdivision, which are part of a housing ward, which are part of the entire housing district of which there are currently four. There are small, medium, and large lots that you can buy for yourself or you can purchase them as a free company. There is a finite number of houses on every single server on the entire planet. As a side note, the clear rate for whatever is considered to be the hardest ultimate is usually less than 10% of the active player base, but there is not a limit on how many people can clear ultimate. There is, however, a hard limit on how many people can own a house. I am not going to do a history lesson on this, but the way that it works to buy a house in this game is rather psychotic. There are two main ways to purchase land in Final Fantasy XIV. The first way is the way that I purchased a medium-sized lot for my free company, which is by being subbed to the game when the housing districts are expanded. During this time, you will practice a speedrun route to get to the house that you would like to buy, and it's first come, first serve for who gets the house. So I did this by waking up at around 2.30 a.m., magically signing into the game and not being one of the people who got kicked from the login queue, and running to the house that I originally wanted, only to realize that it was purchased and found another one available and bought that one. That was my 3 a.m. challenge that was done on what was technically a Wednesday morning. So thankfully I am a neat and didn't have to worry about going to work or school the next day. With that lot acquired, I didn't go to bed and instead started grinding Bajja because I have an addiction. This method that I just described sounds pretty shitty, but is actually the easy version. Alternatively, if someone doesn't enter their house for like 60 days or something, it'll be demolished and put up for sale. There is a random hidden timer that ticks down to determine when the house will be available, and everyone who wants it has to sit there and click over and over, hoping that when they click it, it will now magically be available. There are two kinds of players who click on placards. Those who use a macro or a bot, and fucking liars. Is using an auto clicker against terms of service? Yes. Much in the same way how murder is illegal. If it's against the law, nobody does it. This is how you obtain a house in Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers. In other words, it's a massive piece of shit. Either resulting in you no lifing next to a placard hoping that you get lucky, or hope that you just happen to be actively playing the game when there is a slightly easier chance to get a house while also damaging your career or GPA. Then when someone inevitably beats you to the punch in either case, you will almost be as angry as the average League of Legends player. What is it that you need, Lord Algorithm? Engagement metrics? Of course, everyone loves being told to like, comment, subscribe all the time. That is all it takes to consume. Even if you do manage to defy all the odds, what does housing even do? Another excellent question. Besides making a private room in your FC house to take screenshots, you could also open a completely unique and totally original cafe for other RP purposes. You've probably seen at least one advertisement for such a venue. I don't have any problems with people socializing in-game with some long, complicated character backstory. Housing is probably the best place for that kind of stuff anyways. So you can decorate your house by crafting furniture or by collecting pieces through alternative methods. This will allow your venue to look better or just be done for self-satisfaction. Another thing is that sometimes people will clip furniture out of bounds and try to make jumping puzzles or just make really awesome looking interiors for whatever it is that they want. That is the social, non-direct gameplay side of things. But despite the idea of this making a cool neighborhood with a social environment, most subdivisions 
are simply ghost towns. If I see another player walking around next to my free company house, I freak out and hide because it's so surprising. This is why everyone has to advertise their cafe somewhere because it's not like you can just stumble upon it. You also have real gameplay mechanics though, like farming, which is a farming simulator that you cannot currently participate in unless you have a lot to build on. I don't know if the farming simulator is any good or not, but you don't even get to judge it for yourself without owning property. In addition to growing things, you also have a company workshop that can be used to make an airship or a submarine that you also have to build up. And you can send them out to get various materials. In other words, it's just another venture system. You can craft stuff in this workshop, which is usually for housing. And maybe eventually craft some tier 3 company actions. Which is... something. So this is one of the reasons why housing can get a bit of a bad reputation. Despite the gameplay mechanics being mostly useless, having actual gameplay mechanics tied to housing is no bueno. It goes without saying, but Final Fantasy XIV is very much a game without too many completely exclusive pieces of content. You can level all jobs on one character, you can run every single instance if you want to, it's even possible for every player to clear every ultimate. The point being, for a game that prides itself on allowing you to do everything, it's weird when stuff is exclusive at all. Except, of course, for seasonal events and PvP reports. In this case, the farming simulator is not something that everyone gets a chance to try in the first place, which is already annoying, but throw in the stupid submarine venture system and you have a recipe for not a whole lot, actually. Neither of these systems are so robust that they deserve practically killing everybody around you just to get a chance to use it. I'd say the biggest loss is for people who love crafting and gathering more than anything else in this game, where housing is practically the only crafting endgame and you don't really get to do anything with it unless you have a house. Needless to say, it is still ruthlessly cutthroat to get a piece of property in the first place, particularly in highly populated servers, and especially ones that have large RP communities. Where if you don't have a clicker, or a tool to log in as soon as the servers are up, you're most likely going to lose. I could complain for longer, but I don't want to spend 30 minutes filling you in on how stupid housing is in the first place, so let's move on. So a better question to ask is what is being done to housing in the future? Endwalker leaks are like a trickle of urine coming from a man with an enlarged prostate. We do know for sure that the next housing district is going to forego the clicky placard system in favor of a lottery system. You will put money in to buy the property and you'll be randomly selected from everyone else who attempted to buy that piece of property. If you don't win, you will get your money back and the winner simply gets the house. Don't take my words 100% literally, that is not the exact system, there are some other restrictions and conditions, but the lottery system is the general premise for new housing going forward, it would seem. While some amazingly high IQ individuals have already cracked the code that a lottery system is also flawed, that is definitely not the goal of this change. Instead of forcing players to either log in right when the servers go up or spend hours in front of a lot, you can simply put your name in and see what happens. This way, people who have, um, actual lives outside from video games aren't excluded from having a chance to get a house. It's still going to be completely random, but even I might want to put my lot in on a big house just because it seems almost feasible now. So it is an improvement over the current system in my opinion. Ignoring the fact that it's still limited, it's still completely random, people with tons of money will probably have a slight advantage, and there are still features gated behind housing in the first place, but at least we will fix one of the current issues. Speaking of mechanics gated behind housing, farming. Island Sanctuary is something that's coming in Endwalker that we know next to nothing about. Thankfully, it seems as if the community is pretty openly pessimistic about this, constantly telling everyone to not get their hopes up. Although if it doesn't allow you to farm at a bare minimum, I would be very surprised. I do not think this is the legendary instance housing that the player base has been begging for. That sounds way too good to be true. And if the dev team had programmed something like that, they would be parading it around right now and bragging. Although purely based off of this and with pure speculation, the plan seems to be moving forward is to take the gameplay systems that are gated through housing and moving them somewhere else that all players could access. Airships and submarines are going to be accessible from your hotel room. You heard it here first. 
As for the housing and decorating mini game, you do have apartments that you can buy and decorate. That's something that's usually around. If only there was a way to make instance housing. Maybe it'll be possible to give everyone a slightly larger apartment space that they will decorate once and never revisit ever again. I think it goes without saying, but a form of instanced decorating gameplay spaces that every player can utilize is probably the only true way to make housing not some kind of limited supply, infinite demand problem. If only there was a thing that could be used for this, I think we could call it instanced something. I'm not really sure what though. Now that I'm once again letting you know that we're still not getting instance housing, I'm just going to make a segment here to talk a little bit about the dark underworld of housing in Final Fantasy XIV. There are people, and groups of people, that buy up houses in Final Fantasy XIV and try to sell them to people either through real money or by demanding max cash stacks, which is pretty hilarious. That's exactly what I wanted. However, now that I have given you this completely baseless and crazy conspiracy theory, I'm just going to let you know that I'm going to blame the only thing that makes sense. Aliens. While you're still digesting that conspiracy theory, I'm going to move on from all of this and make some grand conclusion at the end here. Housing in Final Fantasy XIV. It's competitive. It's brutal. It's extremely limited. And it's something to do at the end game. All I'm saying is, for the people who can tolerate to put all the work in to get a house, they definitely have the worth ethic at the very least to beat all the ultimates. It's still fun to walk around and see these well-decorated spaces, and I get why other people like sitting at a bar while a femro in 2B leggings hands you some kind of crafted food. The only positive I will leave you with is that the dev team is very aware of the problem, and are working on solutions. I just don't feel that great about it because expanding the housing system that we currently have is really just a stopgap and not an actual permanent solution. Instance housing. So anyways, I'm going to go back to working on my in-game sex dungeon and wonder why I went through all this trouble for something that I don't even put any time into anymore. Now let's get out there and start fuming when someone walks up to your placard and takes the property right in front of you in one try.